Thoughts this morning is back again. I'm Austin Okonakban. Good morning and welcome. I'm Cecilia Omogbe. Okay, let's make it an action-packed edition. What are you talking about? It's a busy, busy, interesting world of sports. Let's begin with the Nigeria Professional Football League. Can you believe it? We're getting ready for March Day 5. Cecilia, this league just started. And we're having March Day 5. You know, when, when you're playing weekend and midweek, wow. that's what happens. What a rush. Yeah, it's a rush. And it's a big one. Okay, from the move to England, where the Saints and the Devils Ooh. will definitely be battling it out in the <laughs> EFL Cup final. Manchester United, Southampton, and Manchester United lost to Hull City yesterday 2-1. But because of the 2 nil victory they had, they qualified 3-2. Mm. And for Jose Marie, he says the unbeaten run is still very much intact. So I That's love that right. guy. Yeah, it's still, it's still <laughs> un unbeaten for him. And then now... I mean, Southampton, known as the Saints. Manchester United, known as the Red Devils. We will know when the Saints <laughs> and the Devils meet. Talk about names right there. Okay, let's get on with the show now. Uh, we told you that this year's Australian Open, it's taking us back to the ages. We know that Serena Williams is in the final. Venus Williams in the final. Roger Federer is also in the final. Who is going to join Roger Federer for the final game? Is it Rafael Nadal? Or Gregor Dimitrov, Cecilia. Which one is the potent one among them? Which is old? Who is older? <laughs> because this is, a, this, is a, <laughs> this is a competition for the old people. So uh, Rafael Nadal can't wait to actually meet uh, Roger, Roger Federer again. Mm. I think. Wow. He might be joining him. But if we don't get that, it's going to be a huge upset, you know. Yeah, well. Gregor Dimitrov, it's hard time you actually win a grand slam. Mm, mm. Particularly, particularly for the fact that uh, you see Roger Federer in there now, he was saying to himself, uh, let me be the odd person. Let me make a difference. Let me stop these guys that thought they could give tennis some break and then come back and then start beating all of us that have been, you know, active. But yeah, we remember we mentioned Gregor Dimitrov at the start mm, of the Australian yeah. Open. We said he's one of those guys that needs to impress. And I think so far, if you can make it to the semi finals and um looking closely if you can make it he has already done well for himself yeah i don't think so because uh, no no uh, before now there was a time he was in the top 10 then later he kind of his career kind of nose dive in mm -hmm. the sense he was even ranked 40th in the world but 2016 and towards the end of 2016 he was able to revive it That's and right. now you've seen his ranking has actually improved and everything so it tells you that Grigor Dimitrov it was supposed to be a guy who could have been someone like, uh, would I say Stan Vavrinka? Okay, Stan Vavrinka is older, okay. but I can say maybe uh, Marin Cilic. Marin Cilic has won a Grand Slam. Yeah. So we, we're trying to equate Marin Cilic, Kenny Shikuri, you know, both of them, you know, in the same category. Yeah. And also Ooh, maybe Milos Raonic. 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 But right. when, when, when mm. you take a look at Gigeret Dimitrov, sometimes when you expect him to actually, you know, bring out his best, he doesn't. But he's got a new coach now, and that is definitely, you know, telling on his kind of play. Uh, it might just be tough for Rafael Nadal, yeah. but his potent play and the way he displays and all that, he might just make it because, you know, when you're looking into the future, knowing that Roger Federer is waiting, you obviously want to quickly finish the, <laughs> the game in and anyway, go there. In any way, you want to look at Roger Federer making the final. Rafael Nadal, Nadal would draw motivation from it. Dimitrov will also draw some good motivation mm -hmm. for it. Like you mentioned, uh, he was doing so well, mm -hmm. and then his, his, you know, his game started you know, dwindling, and then he came back. But let us pause and give a big salute to this man, Roger Fedra. What a story. <laughs> Cecilia, um, went out for quite some time, yeah. told us that if he comes back and he's, you know, he stays fit, look, look, at what he made, it, it, look at what he made stand. Look at what he did. <laughs> to his compatriots right there. That's what sport does. And the, the emotions, the passion, you know. We've seen rackets smashed. This is the first time I'm seeing it, you know, you know <laughs> destroyed I, I, that way. Destroyed <laughs> completely, immediately. You know, he needed yeah. to vent the anger Oh my there. goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Mm. But then I think Sublime Federer as usual, poetic, and you know, he, the way he plays, you know, it's kind of artful. That's why people call him artful Federer. Mm. Because he just wants to, you know, no matter what, you know, no aggression. Just played at fully. And at the end of the day, he just got the victory he needed. But I think Stan Demar was definitely ready for this game. How he was able to push him from, you know, two sets down and winning the other two sets. And after that, it was in the final set that Federer just take a look at the fact that he never expected he would be in the semifinals even in the finals. So now you're mm. there. What do you do? Just take mm. advantage of it. And that's what he did in five sets. An epic match it was <laughs> on Thursday morning. That's what epic it is. Match. You know, as, as it, um, Cecilia, I keep telling you that 
Stan Wawrinka, a lot of expectations from him yeah. when he's powering you know, on you, like his play. I mean, he's fantastic at the baselines. He can run to the left, run to the right. His forearm is good. But I know when it comes to the big stage, particularly after winning that Grand Slam title, Stan is just fine with getting to the quarterfinals, the semifinals, and that's it. Or go win two ATP tours, and that's all over for him. Well, Roger Federer jokingly said maybe it's the end of the road for him. <laughs> and um, we like the story. Federer defeated him. Federer is in the final. But let's go back to uh, Grigor Dimitrov and uh, Sicilia. That guy can create an upset. Uh, at the moment, he's ranked 15th in the world. His highest ranking has been world number 8. You mentioned that. He's been in the top 10 before. So he understands what it means to wine and dine with these guys. But with this Australian Open that has shown to be one for the ages, can Dimitrov actually, <laughs> actually make it to the final? I think if he does, he will give us more talking points um, than Rafael Nadal. He's just 25 years old. Uh, yep. Coco was 25 or is 25 <laughs> also. Couldn't, you know, make it to the final in the women's in a, singles. In uh -huh. she was playing a 36-year-old lady. There you go. Roger Federer, <laughs> also. 35. 35. Uh, 30. So, Roger Federer is... Um, uh, Rafa Nadal is older than this guy. Roger Federer, of course, is older than, than Dimitrov. But Dimitrov, at 25, has played good tennis for himself. Cecilia, he can believe. He can believe mm. and go ahead to win. But it's going to be difficult for him. But I just want to see uh, Roger Federer, you know, actually equaling a uh, record. Because if you check uh, U.S. Open in 1974, there was a certain Ken Roswell. He was 39 when he won a Grand Slam. Mm. So if Roger Federer, you know, beat Nadal or Grigor Dimitrov, whoever he's going to face in the finals, obviously he would have, you know, become the oldest player to win the Australian Open. Okay. I'm uh, expecting Grigor, that. Grigor, <laughs> all the best. Uh, last year, he could only... Um, only get better. You know, <laughs> that's it. We can only wish you all the best of luck. But that's why we wait for who would play Roger Federer in the final. In the women's single, we already know the people that will play in the finals. It's the Williams sisters. Cecilia, um, I've seen all sorts of stats. <laughs> Everyone is trying to, you know, see uh, what sort of finals we're going to get <laughs> when the Williams sisters clash against themselves. So Cecilia, they have to Yeah, head. this is what we have here. You know, age, just one year difference, 36, 35. Uh, the baby sister and of course the elder sister the wins of course serena williams having 16 and venus 11 titles serena has been consistent on court but 71 49 and for majors of course 22 and 7 and venus williams she has never won the australian open so this could just be her chance to add that to her collection of titles and rankings of course serena second and venus is 17. You know, when you look at statistics, it says, okay, ah, Serena, she, she's yeah, got the she's, upper hand and all yeah. that. When you get on court, sometimes tennis is one of the sports that is not predictable, especially when you look at the last two years, when Serena was trying to get a 22nd Grand Slam. Yeah. We're having some ladies, uh -huh. Jennifer from nowhere, uh -huh. you know, some Italians coming. That's right. Uh, Lena, mm. all of them coming mm. around and not just getting it, you know, worn off and everything. But you really can't predict what's going to happen in this one. But, you know, both of them right now, you know, more like they're having a feel. I, I believe maybe 10 years ago, in 2017, they wouldn't have dreamt that, that. they will be playing mm. in the finals of an Australian Open. So, that's the way it is. I think whoever wins, I mean, both of them actually winning. I mean, Cecilia, these <laughs> sisters, um, they've left upon this, like, you and I, you know, emotional. Speechless. Some people are speechless. <laughs> I agree with you. So, you know, in writing this story, you don't know the angle to take it from, yeah. particularly that we we come here most times. I was like, <laughs> we know Venus. She won't go beyond maybe third round. Serena, you mentioned when she was looking for that 22nd Grand Slam title, how difficult it was. She had to dig deep, dig deep. You know, but she didn't give up. And this, 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 this lady at 35, Cecilia, she still plays awesome. Awesome tennis. I remember I was arguing her age with you about three, four days ago because I was like, with the power play, no, she can't be 35, okay. you know? Right. And she has shown some good consistency. I'm scared whenever uh, Serena even says she's injured or she's, she's having injury worries. You should be careful because that's when she plays admirable tennis. Yeah, that's the way mm. Serena Williams is. And for Venus Williams, well, I think maybe Serena just allowed her to win the elusive Australian Open title. Now, we'll straight from tennis now quickly. We'll just look at the NBA, the All-Star. The list is out, but the results and all the starters and everything. We talked about the fact that Russell Westbrook will definitely be uh, at the reserve. Well, you, you know, I don't know. When you just look at that, is it like what's happening? Well, we'll take a look at the result first. What went down 
overnight in the NBA, starting with our uh, Dallas Maverick and Oklahoma City Thunder. Russell Westbrook, the man in the picture, scoring 45 points and he was able to help uh, his team to get that victory. And for LA Lakers, uh, still losing, uh, Gordon Hayward scored 24 points to help the UT Jazz beat the LA Lakers 96 88. And for Indiana Pacers and uh, Timberwolves, it was Paul George who scored 32 points after being picked for his fourth all time game to lead the Indiana Pacers to 109 and 103 victory over Minnesota Timberwolves. And of course, for the Suns, well, it was Nikola Jonic. Uh, Jokic that had about 27 points, 14 rebounds and 8 assists as before are leaving with an injury late in the game. And then Devon Nuggets, you know, beating the Phoenix Suns 127 and 120. That's results coming from the NBA. But then the big story That's for right. today is mm. definitely uh, the all-star list. Everything is out, both the starters and the reserve. We talked about the fact that we were expecting Russell Westbrook to be in the status for the West, but somehow it just hmm. wasn't to be. We just start from the Eastern Conference status now. That's the 2017 NBA All Star. So it's ready. You have Giannis. Uh, okay, Tayo called this guy Ade to Kumbo. But then, <laughs> <laughs> what's in Nigeria? So, right now, you know, when you go to Greece when you're a baby, then your parents just have to change the name to some, something else. Uh, Jimmy Butler is also there. Demand DeRozan is there. LeBron James and Kerry oh, Ivan, all mm. of them making the starters for the Eastern Conference. Then the reserve, that's where you have it. Isaiah Thomas and John Wall. You know, Austin, you talked about the fact that Sonny Young told Mentioned you that. Mentioned John Wall has to be wizards. there. He mm -hmm. had to be there. And Kevin Love. Uh, Kali Laurie, Paul George, Kemba Walker, and Paul Mitchell, all of them making it for the East uh, Eastern Conference Reserves there in the NBA All Stars. And we'll go to the West now. Seth Curry, of course, he's the man to watch out for. Kevin Durant, James Harden, Kawhi Leonard, and Anthony Davis, all of them making up the starter. Then for the reserves, surprisingly, Russell Westbrook is there. Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, Demarcus Cousins, Mark Gasol, DeAndre Jordan, and a uh, Golden Hayward, all of them making up the reserve for that particular uh, Western Conference. So, mm. well, mm. I, I, Russell Westbrook, your guy, averaging you know <laughs> a triple double a season, and he's a reserve. So it tells you that the NBA this season mm. is tough, or maybe right. just the voting system just mm. wasn't right. I understand. Uh, Steph Curry would just have to be there, yeah. you know, because of mm -hmm. his popularity, his name mm -hmm. and everything. Why would I prefer this season? If you ask me, I prefer Westbrook in that, in that particular kind of. Uh, yeah. you, you will, but, <laughs> but it, is, it is what it is. Um, mm -hmm. He's in the reserves. And when you look at the, the players, look at Mark Gasol in the reserves. Look at Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, you know, just tells you... You look at the West and you start saying, where would the East start from? Well, it doesn't work that way with the All Stars. You know? This guy is <laughs> so too many, talented. Too, too, many, too, too many firepowers in the West. Okay, right. Tiger Woods mm. right now. Tiger Woods, you no. Know, wow, fires erratic 76 years. That's the way you have to describe his short <laughs> his return to PJ to Torrey Pines. But then Tiger Woods, he had to face a tough tax to make the halfway court at the Farmers Insurance Open. Making his first start for 17 months with a 4 over 76. Do you think? Plenty. It's a silly look. <laughs> I mean, let's use whatever adjective we want to yeah, describe Tiger Yeah, but the good thing is that he's back. That's right. Do you know what it means for golf to be seeing Tiger who's, you know, swing, you know, and then, you know, come out to play golf? And the endorsement, Cecilia, each time this man comes out. That's what you're looking at. Yeah, I mean, each time this man comes out, it is even motivation to the likes, to the likes of Day, Bubba Watson, the younger generation playing golf now. It's Tiger Wood and that's what it is. You know, you're watching sports this morning on Channel's television. Let's take a breather now. When we come back, there's still so much to talk about. We'll look at sports development, Lagos State. Don't go anywhere. Stay.